morning. This is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games. Sorry for the slightly late start today. Um, yes, it's e-newsletter day, so always a little bit more going on than normal. Hopefully I can be in focus in a second here. Uh, am I out of focus to you? Let's see here. Oh, I'm definitely out of focus. My camera is so weird. There we go, maybe. Um, so yeah, today is our monthly e-newsletter day, and I have a link in the description here if you want to check out the e-newsletter in case you didn't receive it. Uh, we have kind of a, a fairly big surprise today. I'm looking at my other screen to look at this and some other news. So I will go over that today so you can see what's going on. Let me start out with that news and then I'll jump over to comments. I see some people are already joining in. I'm excited to talk about this stuff today. But the big thing that we announced today is something called Rolling Realms Redux. So we have decided to package together 12 completely new promo realms, or not promo realms, but realms for, still, for uh, Rolling Realms, and put them in a, uh, a full box so you can buy a bunch of realms all at once rather than individual realms one at a time. So this, this is kind of in combination with, so we have Rolling Realms, the core product, the, the core standalone game for Rolling Realms. Then we have promo realms that we'll, we continue to have. We will continue to release them. And then we have Rolling Realms Redux, which is its own thing. It's a standalone game and an expansion to Rolling Realms. It's the same rules, completely compatible. And it will have 12 completely new realms not found elsewhere um, in the Rolling Realms universe. They're all based on games from other publishers. We'll reveal that on an ongoing basis. You can see a bunch of question marks on the box. There's a mystery as to what realms are in the box. Uh, and we're announcing it a lot earlier than we normally would because we want to gauge demand for this product. We want to make sure that we make the right amount, something that we're always trying to figure out, a puzzle of demand forecasting and demand forecasting. So we have this product uh, on our website now, not our web store, but our website for you to sign up for updates about. So we'll update you whenever we reveal one of the realms that are in the game. We'll also update you when the game goes live, when we launch it about a year from now. So we haven't started to make it yet. It is pretty much final. Like we know all the realms in it. We, we have already designed the box to make sure it holds everything, um, all those sorts of things. I'm happy to answer maybe most questions about it other than the realms that are inside of it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an early, we're calling this a tease, a, a teaser product. We are teasing it very early to gauge demand. Uh, so we know how many to make. Um, yeah, so that is one of the big things I wanted to mention today. I have some other topics, but let me jump over to comments and then come back to that topic in a moment. Let's see. Carlos has one of his planned questions here. He says, I enjoy Dune Imperium as a two-player game, but can't imagine it will work without House Hagal, an autom auto automata third player. I can only think of Tapestry as a Stonemaier game that is something similar but was added in an expansion. As you... Uh, yeah, was the Shadow Shadow Empire variant, I think, was in the first expansion. I think you're right about that. Uh, sorry, uh, scrolling past your comment here, Carlos. As you already invested in a one-player mode, don't you think it makes sense to do a little more development and always add a, always add a variant to include, or always have a variant included to include such a possibility? Hmm, already invested in a one-player mode, don't you already think it makes sense to do and always add a variant to include such a possibility. Um, oh, for for higher player count games. I see what you're saying. Um, that's tough to say, Carlos. So I'll say that I, can, I can't speak for Dune Imperium, obviously, but I can say that as a publisher, it is e the easiest thing to do to playtest a game is to playtest it at two players. It's much easier to find one other playtester, one, one other team member to playtest it, things like that. Very easy to do that. And so I would wager that most games are, uh, most games, this is at least for Stonemaier games, uh, have been playtested the most at two and therefore should probably work the best at two um, than all other player counts. And so if a company stands behind their two player version uh, with, with or without uh, a, 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 an automatic player or automatic entity, um, they really mean it. And I really do mean that for Tapestry. I think most people do not play Tapestry with the Shadow Empire variant when they're playing at two players. Uh, and that's because I designed Tapestry to really do, to really play really well at two players. Um, so yeah, that I guess that's my answer for two-player play. I Whenever I design two-player play, I design it to be awesome without the need for an external bot. And if our Automa team designs a bot, bot that can be played with multiple players, that's cool too. Some people like that, but I think very few people actually play that way. And I think most games 
work really well without the addition of that. Adam says, how did you like Haha ha Tonka? Yeah, so one of the things I did this past weekend is I went to a concert for the first time since before the pandemic. Um, I was there for the opening band, a band called Me Like Bees. Um, and they were opening for a band that I wasn't familiar with called Haha ha Tonka, both bands based from in Missouri. And Adam asked how, how I liked this band. And I really, I, I thought their music was great. Um, I love Me Like Bees and Haha ha Tonka was a great compliment to them. Kind of pop rock with a touch of folk to it. The perfect sound for me. That's that's the sound that I like in music. I talked about these bands um, on my Monday blog post about opening acts and how the idea of combining essentially two concerts in one when you go to a concert is really cool. And I think it applies in some ways to other products and other businesses and tabletop games. That was my Monday blog post. And before I forget, my blog post last Thursday, if you're interested, what was that one about? It was about, oh... It was about our vision-friendly cards for, for Wingspan, which I also promoted again in our e-newsletter, um, mentioning them as something that you could get as a gift to someone who maybe wants to play Wingspan but struggles to read the cards. Um, you can get them at the heaviest discount if you buy the associated product at the same time on our web store. Like if you buy Wingspan European and you buy the European vision-friendly pack at the same time, you get a huge discount on it. And um, also, if you have been curious about some of the birds in a different co in a continent that you don't want the full expansion for, you can get uh, just the the, the vision friendly birds for that complement for that continent now as well. But in the blog post last Thursday, I talked about how the interest for this product seemed a lot higher than the number of people who have actually bought the product. And so it's uh, it, it's something maybe you've heard me talk about on these live casts. Something I've been thinking about a lot lately. The other thing I mentioned in the, at the top of the e-newsletter is that Rolling Realms Digital, it was actually supposed to go live today, but the developer discovered a few glitches that they wanted to fix. And so um, the launch will happen very soon for it, for Rolling Realms Digital. So if you subscribe to a notification for it on Steam, then you will get a notification when it launches and you can go buy Rolling Realms Digital. I'll come back to more e-newsletter stuff in a second. Let me go back to comments. Karel, the primary developer and designer for most of the realms in Rolling Realms Redux, is joining us from a vacation in the Netherlands today. I hope you're doing well, Karel. Let's see. Uh, Suzanne says, when will we start selling Rolling Realms Redux? In about a year. Our estimate is uh, about next summer. So this isn't a product that we're accepting money for yet. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make it based on your demand, and then we'll sell it once it arrives. It'll be one of those types of products for us. It's a yeah. Carol says, how was your lighter work day yesterday and how is Biddy doing? Got a, I had a very productive day yesterday. Some good design time, some good uh, business time too. And uh, definitely fewer emails than normal on July 4th, which was really nice. Carol, Carol also asked how Biddy is doing. He's actually sleeping in a little tent below my desk right now. He's doing okay. Um, so those who, uh, who don't know, my, my cat Biddy is about 16 and a half years old. I got him as a little kitten. Um, he was recently diagnosed, or pretty sure, with intestinal lymphoma. So he has cancer in his in his intestines, and so he is on multiple medications now to make him more comfortable and happier for the time that he has left, which could be weeks, it could be months. I, I don't really know. Um, and he's still really thin, but he is eating more food. You can actually see the food bowl back there. Uh, Previous in his life, Biddy would never leave food in his bowl, but he is leaving food in his bowl now. But he is still eating, and he is uh, going to the bathroom a little better. I'm keeping an eye on him, you know, a, a lot, and just want to make sure that he's comfortable and happy. But uh, yeah, it's it's up and down. It's it's I, I, I wish the motivation, uh, the, I wish the medication would have returned him to his previous self, where he was a lot more food motivated, putting on more weight. He's not really doing that, so I'm keeping an eye on him. Thank you for asking about that, Carol. Julie says, what was the impetus behind making Redux? That's a good question, Julie. Um, that's a, what was the impetus for it? Um, so I think part of it is that the promo realms, they all cost $4, uh, $5. They cost $4 for champions. Sometimes we put them on sale. But they often add up. I mean, if you get a certain number of realms, of promo realms, they add up to more than the cost of the base game itself. And we think the value is there. They add a lot of replay value. We also don't expect anyone to actually buy every realm for Rolling Realms. Um, we want to put out enough that you can pick and choose the ones that are interesting to you. But I thought, you know, 
at some point, wouldn't it be nice for us to re release another core box of the game? I've seen some other uh, other game brands do this, but another core box that included essentially the same number of realms as the original game, which has 11, we're gonna do 12 in, in Redux, at a price that is reflective of a new game, but is less than the cost of 12 realms. So it, uh, the cost of 12 realms would be, what, $60. And so this will be definitely less than $60. Um, that was part of it. The other impetus was uh, giving people a way to have a box that stores all Rolling Realms stuff. The original box does hold quite a bit of realms, but they're not really all, all that organized in the box. And so we wanted a way that you could actually keep the realms upright. So it's a taller box that you can keep the realms upright in and uh, have, have uh, we're going to put in dividers for player count and for the Automa stuff. Um, so we just thought that was a, a nice way to, for people to store all the stuff. But I didn't want to do something along the lines of like a nesting box or legendary box, a box with nothing nothing inside of it other than organizer materials. Uh, I wanted to, you know, it's a way it's a way for us to to put a bunch of realms in that box and we sell it. So I think those were the two main motivations behind it. We've been talking about it for a little while now, working on it for maybe the last six months. So I don't remember the, exactly why I originally started the conversation, but I think those were those two things were on my mind. Eric says he already got ex expeditions for his birthday, and he, he had a blast playing it. Happy birthday, Eric. Yeah, I saw that you uh, had a birthday the other day, and I hope it went well. And thank you for playing expeditions. Expedition shipping it seems to be going well so far. Um, it is actively shipping in Australia, New Zealand, Asia, the U.S. I think I saw some Canadian um, uh, tracking numbers go out, and Europe should be starting to ship this week as well. Uh, shipping will, will continue throughout July. So if you haven't gotten the tracking number, that's perfectly fine. There's a lot to ship out. It'll take some time. Uh, at, could take most of July to ship out all these, these orders. Champions first, then non-champion orders in, in each region. But seems to be going decently so far. Yeah. And you will get a tracking notification when your order ships. Uh, Joshua said, what color, what same size dice as Rolling Realms? I will say the dice are, are going to be the same color. I haven't, uh, not same color, same size. I haven't revealed the color yet, but it will be a new color. Um, we got some samples from Panda a few months ago and made our selection. And, uh, so I will reveal it at some point, but I have not revealed that yet. Ian says, loves the announcement of Rolling Realms Redux. Will you still be releasing new realms every couple months leading up to that? Yeah, Ian, our, our, our plan continues to release new promo realms on an ongoing basis uh, up to, probably up to Rolling Realms Redux. Um, my tentative plan is to have released all of those realms by then because one of the things that we're gonna include in Rolling Realms Redux is a printed copy of the Living Rule Book that has all the rules for all realms ever printed up to that point. And so either we'll release all promos up to that point or it will have spoilers for some promo realms that we've already made but haven't released yet. The only exception to that is that we do plan to continue to make a new realm for each Stillmire game into the future and we hope to be around for a long time as a company. So um, while we're leaving room for those realms in the box, there will be realms that we will not have designed at that point um, that, that, uh, that we'll have to account for in the future. But we're trying to get ahead of schedule so we can include as many of them as possible in Rolling Realms Redux or in the rule book for Rolling Realms Redux. Carol says, are some of the realms uh, in Redux ones that started fan-made? I believe there might be a few of them, Carol. I'm not gonna fully spoil that yet, but I believe there are a few of them in there that started out at least inspired by fan-made realms. Um, yeah, I think there are a few in there. Chess says, was there any reason you chose Redux other than rather than other descriptors for the name of this new game? Uh, I interpret the word Redux as kind of like a return to this game. And I think that's pretty accurate for this game. It's a return to Rolling Realms. Um, I think sometimes the term is used. In fact, fairly recently, I think uh, uh, Garfield Games used this. But uh, as a re-envisioning of the product, which I think is one other way to interpret it, that isn't the case for Rolling Realms Redux. It is just a return to the game um, with new realms. The rules are the same. Carlos says, I love Smitten. It's one of his most played games. I'm honored to hear that, Carlos. Uh, did you ever consider going with a wallet for storing like Button Shy? I really like that storing method. We did. We did. And I think actually Matigo, our, the French version of the game, comes in a wallet. The only reason I didn't do it is that I was going for maximum eco-friendliness with it. So we wanted to use all paper components 
uh, all FSC certified paper components. And those little wallets are, I believe they're plastic, maybe vinyl, but they're not, they're not un-eco-friendly because they're so small, but they're, in fact, they definitely do have plastic in them, but they're also not as eco-friendly as FSC certified renewable, sustainable wood um, products. So um, that's why we didn't do it. Corey from Blue Falcon says, have you looked at the Shiner Kickstarter? It's a quick and fun 54 card drafting set collection game about creating a team to make moonshine or conduct raids on other people as the feds. The designers are local to St. Louis, less than a week to go. You know, I'm not familiar with that, Corey. Can you post a link in the, in the uh, comments here so I can check it out? I appreciate that. Pete says, will new expansions of Wingspan have the high visibility, uh, high uh, the vision-friendly cards included, or will they be sold separately? They will be sold separately, but at the same time. So the card design, the card format for Wingspan has not changed. It is the same as always. But the plan going forward is we will print a small number, as indicated by demand for the first run of these these uh, these cards. We'll print a small number of vision-friendly cards that will sell at the same time as the core product at, at a heavy discount. So. If you buy uh, the next Wingspan expansion, I won't say what it is, but uh, if you buy that, you'll be able to get the Vision Friendly card pack at the same time at a nice discount, if you want it. I know that does create some redundancy for some people, but uh, the Vision Friendly cards do not have the bird facts on them. And so I think it is still fun to have the cards with the bird facts in the game somewhere um, to look through them. And uh, that's, that's the only way to get them if you get uh, the Vision Friendly cards, if you're using the Vision Friendly cards. Mark says hope, he hopes the upcoming Rolling Realms Redux box will fit dr sleeved dry erase cards. I want the sleeves to last longer, so I sleeve them. I'm sorry, Mark, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. In, the mo in most cases, we do plan for sleeved cards, but Rolling Realms is the exception to that uh, because the dry erase cards are designed that you don't need to be, that you don't need to sleeve them. So um, the box is not designed for sleeved cards. It would have to be massive for us to do that and i think that's maybe i appreciate you doing that mark but i think that is a very small number of people who sleeve the cards in rolling realms jake my friend here in st louis is excited about rolling realms digital and redux i'm excited too thank you jake uh ian says not sure if you can answer this let's see but are the 12 new realms from the stack you showed many months ago or are they even newer realms nope there so anything that i've showed like in in like hinting at at uh, realms that we've already printed those are promo realms those are completely different than rolling realms redux we have not shown anything about the realms included in rolling realms redux and they're not even like they won't be in the the foil packs like you see in our uh in our other in, in the promo realm releases they'll just be in the game as as realms kind of like when you opened rolling realms originally Adam says, do you still discover new music frequently? I feel like my music discovery ended, ended right after college. You know, it's gotten harder to do. Uh, I've been using uh, Spotify a little bit for music discovery, but uh, that's what I, one of the cool things about opening acts for, for it, in concerts um, or the pairing of the two bands. It, it's a nice way to discover a new band. But yeah, I, I don't discover it as much as anymore. I also still use iTunes, and iTunes used to be pretty good at recommending Things, but they stopped doing that as far as I know, or maybe I've just minimized that part of the of, of iTunes. But um, but yeah, ever since that, I haven't I haven't. It's harder for me to discover new music. A lot of it actually comes from movies and TV shows. When I hear a song I like there, or even a commercial, if I happen to listen to a commercial, I will uh, I'll check out the music. Corlin says, "Do you like to light off fireworks or watch fireworks more?" I like neither, Corland. I'm actually not a fireworks fan at all. From when I was a little kid, I've never really enjoyed them. And especially now that I have pets, uh, fireworks give pets a lot of anxiety. Many pets. Not all pets, but many pets. And so um, I, I am not a fan of fireworks. And we have had a lot of them in St. Louis over the last few days. Justin's excited about his copy of Expeditions arriving soon. Um... Let me come back to questions in a second, talk about comments or other topics real quick. My video this past weekend was about cooperative games. It's one of those in a series of videos that I've been doing with Stellmeyer Ambassadors where I had some co-hosts in the video where they talked about their favorite cooperative games as well. And we talked about each other's favorite cooperative games. That was really fun. That was on Sunday. Um, other e-newsletter stuff. We have two big restocks. Wingspan Nesting Box is now fully back in stock. If you want the nesting box, you can order it. Not even a pre-order. You can just order it and we will ship it to you. Also, the Scythe, the Metal Mechs are finally back in stock, I think in all regions now. So if you've been waiting to get the Scythe Metal Mechs, we don't print them often. Um, so they will 
be in stock as long as this inventory lasts and then we will wait a while for them to be for us to get enough demand to make a new print run um so if you want all metal mechs like your metal mechs and expeditions if you want them in scythe too those metal mechs are back in stock now i was supposed to yeah the expeditions update oh yeah the one thing that i don't think i mentioned is that oh two things here one expeditions continues to be at a, available at a pre-order discount on our web store but because it isn't really a pre-order anymore at this point. We're actively shipping pre-orders. I am going to end that discount on July 11th. I probably won't take it back up to full price, but it will. the price will go up on July 11th for Expedition. So if you've been on the fence and you like what you've seen from reviews or what people are saying about it, um, it's a good time to get it now because the price is going to go up a little bit. Wanted to give you a heads up about that. Also, uh, there are two different randomizer apps available now on our website for expeditions if you want to randomize your starting combination one is a little bit like choose your own adventure one of them is just press a button and it randomizes it and also the dized tutorial d-i-z-e-d -E there is an interactive tutorial now to help you learn how to play expeditions on the fly so you set up the game you put the tut tutorial on your table using like a, a phone or ipad or laptop and it will just take you through how to play it'll completely guide you on how to play kind of like a watch it play video but with a little bit more interaction there's also a watch it play video if you prefer that last i i guess with expeditions i do continue to post um design diaries about the game. So uh, if you want to see more information about the design process, I plan on posting a little one today and I'm going to do a Tales from Production video probably tomorrow, I think. So keep an eye on that. That'll be all on the design diary page for Rolling Realms. I'll come back to e-newsletter stuff in a second. Let's go back over to Carlos. He says, a popular publisher recently used the word Redux. Yes, uh, for uh, for a completely new version that replaces the previous one. I understand this is not the purpose for Rolling Realms Redux. Do you think that might confuse some customers? It might, yeah. Um, I don't really know what the cor the entirely correct way to use that term is. To me, it's, it's a return to this game. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have redesigned it. But I try to post in, in plain speech on our website that it is the same rules as the core game. So it's just new realms for it. Hopefully it won't be confusing. Yeah. How do you all interpret that word? If you, I guess there is some context now, uh, but if you can kind of remove that context from your mind, if you heard the word redux, do you interpret that as a complete reimagining of a game, different rules, or you imagine that as a game that does have the same rules as, uh, as the previous game? Uh, Chad says that we have, might have similar taste in music. Try listening to a band called Camp. I'll make a note of that. C-A-A-M-P. I'll check that out. Thanks, Chad. I appreciate that. Joshua says, Rolling Realms Redux almost feels like the next set of Magic the Gathering set uh, and the promo realms in between are priced as a pack of Magic cards. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. Yeah. Um, in fact, yeah, ma Magic has definitely influenced the, the feeling of opening those packs for Rolling Realms, even though you know exactly what's going to be inside the pack. Eric is also excited about it. He says, can you tease us by announcing at least one of the new realms included in Redux? You know, Eric, I thought about doing that upon reveal, and maybe I should have, but uh, obviously I didn't do that in the newsletter, so I'm not going to do that um, yet. But I will do it soon, and I might even share more than one at a time, but I'll probably do one a month. But I might lead off with two. I'm thinking I'll probably lead off with two and then do one a month from then on, maybe end then with maybe some other information about it. I don't have an exact plan yet. I just knew that I... I, I wasn't ready to pick one to highlight over all the other ones at, at, at today, especially since hopefully it's exciting just to hear about a new product. Chad says he's still enjoying the game Chicken, a new roll and write, uh, or not roll and write game, a new push your luck game that came out recently. I'm glad you're still enjoying it, Chad. I have it on my table to maybe pull out a game night tonight if people want to play. Trishul says Panda seems to be your manufacturer of choice. That's absolutely true. Uh, they are a Canadian company that has their main facility in, in China. He says, do you have to compete with other publishers for Panda's production line or are they pretty flexible and scalable? They're very flexible and scalable. So I think there was a time early on the pandemic when they got an influx of orders and had to stop taking new clients, but they are definitely accepting new clients now and they are wonderful to work with. I, I absolutely recommend anyone work with Panda. Highly recommend it. Here we go. Corey posted the link to Shiner. I'll check that out after uh, after the livecast, Corey. Eric says, will the size of Redux be the same size as the original box? 
No, Eric, the original box isn't big enough to hold all the different realms that we're hoping to make. It can hold a lot of them, but it really needed to be, in hindsight, it needed to be taller to hold the cards upright. So uh, the new box will be will be tall enough to hold the box the cards upright, and that way it can hold a lot more cards. Andy says another opportunity for him to drop in live from the UK. Really excited for Rolling Realms Redux. There's a lot of love for Rolling Realms in our house, and it's next on our list. Introduced to our group, I've become, I've become part of this year. That's awesome, Andy. Uh, I'm always glad to hear that. I actually used it as an example in my Monday blog post about opening acts for bands because Rolling Realms is essentially a way for you to learn about other games that you might like while also playing a game that you hopefully also enjoy. Um, that's been one of the the joys of. Um, of sharing all these other games, many from other publishers in Rolling Realms. Let's see, I pulled out some. So the, the next realm I'm going to live play has one game from another publisher. as Expedition. So we're going to play with the Expeditions realm finally, now that people are receiving it. We have the Tricarian realm. That's one from another publisher. And we have a Scythe realm in there. I like that Scythe. This is actually random that Scythe and Expeditions ended up in the same um, set. Whenever I do these live plays for Rolling Realms in the Rolling Realms Facebook group, I just randomize all the realms that I have and and... Uh, pick them for usually the next two games. So I make sure I try to hit as many realms as possible. Let's see. Pete says, how prominent are the expansion markings on the vision-friendly cards? I find it hard to re re read the existing markings. Pete, you can see them on our website or web store if you check that out. You can see them. I, I think it's a lot more visible than in the past. We use letters and colors now to show which set uh, the cards come from. Yeah, and I, we're hoping to apply that as well to the normal cards in Wingspan. Okay, Chris has a good question about Rolling Realms. He says he noticed that Biddy and Walter and Parks will be back in stock. Um, so, Chris, we actually we have inventory for them, but we've received enough reports that the dry erase material on those particular realms doesn't work as intended that we didn't feel comfortable continuing to sell them until we figure out a way to fix that issue. So... The cards technically function, but it's not, it doesn't erase as well as they should, for sure. And so we were talking to Panda about this. We're trying to find a solution for that problem. And once we have a solution, um, we'll, we'll probably end up replacing the realms that we've already sent out to people who have those realms. We're not exactly sure yet. And we want to see if there is a material that gets it off those cards, uh, like a, uh, you know, a Windex, things like that to get it off the cards. But so far... It isn't looking good. It, it doesn't look like um, we can continue to sell those specific packs. Yeah, so that's that's why they're off the store. It's not because we're out of stock. It's because we don't feel comfortable selling an inferior product that we know isn't working as intended. Um, let's see. Dwayne says, if, on the subject of the Kickstarter projects, have you seen the Shelf Care campaign? I think it's great. I have not seen the Shelf Care campaign. Dwayne includes a link here if you're reading along. I'll check that out as well. Sean says, would you consider offering a discount for offer, for ordering multiple promo packs, like order two, get one half off? Um, probably not, no. Uh, like We put equal effort into each of them. Like It doesn't cost us any less to make a realm if you buy two of them instead of only one. Um, so what we do offer is a 20% discount to all champions. And oftentimes, upon release of new realms, Oftentimes when we do that, we just offer a, a blanket 10% discount off of all uh, all Rolling Realms stuff. And so you you may have seen that last month when we did that. So if you don't like the current price of the promo packs for Rolling Realms, just wait until we release more Realms and you'll probably see them available at a at a, at, a, at everything at a 10% discount. And then you can add another 20% to that for Champions. 30% is a pretty significant discount. I think that's reasonable. Nathan, when he, so different, different definitions here. Nathan hears redo. Um, Julie hears return, but with a difference. And that's actually kind of what we were going for there. Uh, uh, return with a difference being that the realms are different. So uh, the rules are the same, but the realms are different. Sounds like multiple people thought, think that redux means redo, redo, or that's what they think of when they hear redux, that it is a uh, redo in the game. And I think that's somewhat accurate. I mean, we are, the, the rules are the same, but the realms are completely different. Um, yeah, I don't know. We could consider a different word for that if we, if we need to if we offer better clarity.
Okay, Ben says uh, the dictionary definition of redux is just means brought back, brought back. Yeah, he's, so he's, he says, so I think either the Garfield fully re redesigned games or Rolling Realms, more realms use, use are appropriate. Usage are appropriate, yeah. Uh, Joshua says that he's excited to maybe see a campaign version of Expedition someday. It is possible. I don't have anything like that planned, but I, I do like what we did with the size, with the Rise of Fenris, with the final expansion, telling the story and concluding that story. So we might do that someday. Skylar says, have I, have I watched The Company You Keep, the heist show on Hulu? Or is there something else you're enjoying watching? Skylar, I don't remember that. Maybe you mentioned that before and I didn't write it down, but I'm going to write it down now. The Company... <clears throat> you keep so i will write that down thank you for the recommendation for hulu right now what are we watching um we actually need a new longer nighttime show we are watching marvel secret invasion but uh that's only one per week i think we've saved up enough episodes so far to go on a small binge of uh of the new season of strange new worlds the star trek show and i feel like there's something else that we have on the docket to watch um, we're still watching it during, at lunch, we're either watching Platonic, How I Met Your Father, no, How I Met Your, yeah, Father, not Mother, and, uh, we just finished the other two, which I really enjoyed. Carrie's up late, joining us from Australia tonight, or today, tonight for Carrie, 1 a.m. Um, so, yeah, multiple people were saying they assume that Redux means redo, um, which isn't exactly the intention. Although, yeah, like I said, it the the realms are different, just not the rules. I'm reading the comments about Redux. I won't read them all out loud here. Okay, Ray says he normally considers what you describe as a remaster other than Redux. That's interesting. I, I do like the word remaster. But it does say to me that it it is a new version of previously existing content which is not the case in, in Rolling Realms. But that term's up for grabs too. I mean, this is one of the nice things. We haven't gone to print on this game, so we could technically change the name from Redux to Remaster if that is clear for other people, or a different term. Carol says she thinks that Tricarian is appropriately the, appropriately the trickiest realm in her opinion so far. It is a pretty tricky realm. Kendrick says, will the Redux box be able to fit all the possible realms? Yes. Yeah, that is a major intention of, of the uh, Redux box. It is designed to hold all realms we've already made, all realms we plan to make, and all realms included in Rolling Realms Redux as well. Nancy Jane also asked about Biddy. Uh, I did talk about that a little bit earlier with Nancy Jane, but my, my short recap is that he's still under my desk right here. He is he's doing okay. He isn't fully bouncing back. He's still uh, much lighter in terms of his weight than he used to be. He is less food motivated than he used to be as well, which is the main concern to me, but he's doing okay so far. He's responded fairly well to the medication as far as I can tell. Thank you for asking about that. Patrick says that uh, Psy the Wingspan ended up on a list from Watch Mojo, the 20 best board games of the century so far. That's a nice compliment. Psy actually came out in fact, both games came out before the current century. Um, oh no, last uh, current decade. Century is fair game, yeah. Um, but before uh, before the current decade, Julie says the standard dry erase board cleaner work on the cards. That's what I have used in illustrations and his son's or her son's dry erase books. Julie, if you have the cards, give it a try. This is specifically for the Biddy and Walter realm and for the Parks realm. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I just typically use the dry erase, uh, like the, the little pad here, and that that generally works for me. But it does not work as well in those realms, for sure. Uh, Ian, actually, okay, great. Ian already re replied to say that it does work well, even for the realms where the the coating doesn't seem to be the same quality as the other ones. JB says, I was reading your blog on the Vision Friendly Cards launch. I feel sorry about the small demand. How can we help you? Oh, that's very nice of you to say, JB. Um, that's a good question. I mean, no one no one is obligated to buy this product. We made this product to serve people who wanted more vision-friendly cards for Wingspan. So if that is a good fit for you or someone in your life, or if you just want the cards for an expansion, a Wingspan expansion where you didn't want to buy the full expansion, you can support the product by, by buying it. But um, 
I think the main thing is in the future, uh, it's always helpful for us when we ask you about if you're interested in a product, if you're if you want updates about it, if you're interested in buying it, like we're doing for Rolling Realms Redux, that if you sign up for it, if your interest is genuine, if you intend to buy it, sign up for it or answer the survey that we send out at. And if you're not, that's great too. Sometimes on the survey, there's an option to say, no, I'm not interested in it. Sometimes you just don't answer the survey. Um, that data, that data is all really, really helpful for us. So I think that's the main way to help JB in the future. Uh, just thanks for following along and answering those surveys when we send them out. Oh, uh, we actually did finish the show Silo last week, the, the first season finale. Hilda says that uh, her husband are, and her are watching Silo and really enjoying it, making makes her want to continue reading the books. It was really good. I, I It's a 10 episode arc in the first season. Some great mysteries throughout it. Uh, Carol asks, do we watch The Bear? We do watch The Bear. Um, I don't know if Megan wants to watch the second season, which is partially available now. I will definitely be watching it, though. I'm also watching Rick and Morty, whatever the latest season for Rick and Morty is on Hulu. Megan's not into that either. So I watch it whenever I'm like cutting and pasting a prototype, things like that. Joe says it's been a while since he's been able to pop in. He finally tried Viticulture and loved it. That's great, Joe. I'm glad you enjoyed it. He says you might have to upgrade it to the Essential Edition. Oh, most copies out there in the wild are the Essential, essential Edition. So if you have another version of it, that's from way back in the day. We haven't sold a non-essential version for a long, long time. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you got to, got to play a version of it, Joe. Ian's enjoying Marvel Secret Invasion as well. Oh, Black Mirror. I do want to get back to Black Mirror, this new season of that. That might have to be on the list. Yeah, Megan and I will have to talk about our, our new nighttime show for the next couple days at some point. We did watch a movie this past weekend on Netflix called Nimona. It's an animated film, and I really enjoyed it. I knew nothing about it going into it, and I would actually recommend not looking up all that much. It, it, but it, I would say it is family friendly and beautifully filmed. It's anim fully animated. I, and almost from the prom promotional image, I thought it was going to be about one thing, and it, it isn't, and that was okay. Really cool movie, Nimona. Great animated film that's on Netflix now if you're looking for a good animated movie. Kerry says his board gaming has changed a lot in the past 12 months as he has met someone special. That's wonderful. Fallen in love. That's even more amazing. And we're now living together. Even more amazing. She's not a gamer and her English reading is not great. What are some great gateway games that don't rely on text? Great. Uh, you know, that's a great list I should make, Kerry. Um, language. Top 10 language independent games. Top 10 language independent games. Maybe that should be today's question for the day. I didn't. I don't think I had a question of the day today. Uh, so anyone who has a recommendation for a great language independent game, let Carrie know. Most games from Stillmire Games are language dependent. I think maybe the only one that's um, well, the, the the two between two games, between two cities, between two castles are are not. They require you to read a reference card, but once you know the iconology, it's pretty clear. Um, so those might be our only language independent games. Let me look over at my shelf over here to see what I would say are some of my favorite language independent games. Uh, on tour, I see, I'll just, I'll just say some out loud while I say them. On tour, Downforce is language independent. Um, well, There's a lot of language dependent games here. I think Seven Wonders Duel is mostly language independent, maybe even fully language independent. Uh, I have a lot. Of, yeah, I have a lot of language dependent games. Uh, the Whatnot Cabinet, Azul Summer Pavilion, Sagrada. So a lot of abstract games up there. Dice Miner, I believe, is language independent. Cartographers might be. Yeah, th those are a few off the top of my head. Someone says Reroll as a name for Rolling Realm instead of Redux. So Remaster, Redux, Reroll. All good names. I think I'm behind. If I miss a comment here, let me know. I, I, Facebook is scrolling past some comments that I missed. I think Joshua said, uh, am I backing anything right now? I don't think I'm backing anything that's like live right now. Joshua says, "Is so we, we have a new t-shirt for champions that we mentioned in champions. Will it be available in any other colors? No, we just do one color per shirt. 
I know the color that we chose this time is a little different, but we wanted a color that was different that we haven't done before. And it is thematically tied to one of the, the things on the shirt itself. Uh, Chris said, I don't think I would have answered yes on the vision friendly card. Oh, shoot. Facebook scrolled past it. I'm sorry. Um, Facebook is scrolling past questions here. Mark says, will Rolling Realms Redux have more features not yet announced, like a mini golf solo campaign, just like the Rolling Realms original? That's a great question, Mark. Yeah, I look forward to answering answering that. Uh, that's one that I'll, I'll answer in the future instead of today. But uh, but yeah. Vera said that she loved Nimona. I'm glad you loved it too, Vera. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I cried at least once in the movie. Definitely at one specific time. Yeah. Um... Tony says, have I watched Cabinet of Curiosities? I have it on the list, but we haven't watched it yet. I have heard good things about it. So language independent games, Azul, Splendor. Yeah, I love Splendor. Onitama, Cascadia. Great recommendations for language independent games. Corey says, do you ever find yourself in a board game mindset when, when doing your day-to-day -day life? For example, he traded in his vehicles this weekend and he did everything he could to min-max the sales sheet. I rate disability claims for the veterans, for veterans, and the thing of the laws regulations as my rules, the evidence as my pieces, and then I see how ma to maximize the benefits. I don't know if I actually do that, Corey, but I love that you did it here. I, I, I love the idea of, um, I, I like gamifying things in real life. I've done that all my life, trying to make little games of things. Joshua mentioned Sushi Go as a language independent game. Absolutely, Carcassonne. Gerald says, I enjoyed your article on opening acts. Is there an Expeditions rolling realm to be an opening act before you play Expeditions? Also, did any publishers say no to having a realm? A few publishers have said no to it, yeah. Um, which is always surprising to me. Like, it's us promoting something for another publisher with no marketing required of them. We pay them. We do all the work. But I get some people are just hesitant about promos in general. Maybe they've been uh, taken advantage of in the past. There is a realm for Expeditions. Um, I don't... I don't necessarily think it's the best precursor to play in the game because it uses some mechanisms that didn't actually make it into the final version of Expeditions. I have a design diary post on the Expeditions diary, uh, design diary. I believe that's where I put it, um, where you can learn more about that. Uh, Julie mentioned Calico. Ray mentioned Mysterium as language independent games. Renature to Call, some great uh, language recommended uh, language. Uh, independent games here that people are recommending for carry. Five Minute Marvel, Marvel United. Uh, Forbidden, yeah, Forbidden Desert is, I believe, fully language independent. Yeah, I think so. Eric has a bunch here. Azul, Splendor, Santorini, Sagrada, Blocka. Oh, Blockus. Yeah, I love some Blockus. Ticket to Ride, number nine, and Super Mega Lucky Box. So, Carrie, one thing to check out, uh, you're getting some great rec recommendations here, but I do have a video about my favorite abstract games, and I'm guessing that most of them are language independent. So, feel free to check out that video to get some ideas. So many recommendations here. You don't have to look through the comments. There's so many here. I'd be saying them out loud for the rest of the live cast. Uh, Joe says, based on the newsletter, what is the pre order price for Expeditions? Well, the pre-order price is the price that it's currently out for pre-order. I, I don't know it offhand. I think, oh, there are two versions of it. Depends on the price, depends on your region. But that is the current price. That is the pre-order price. That price will go away or go up. It will, it will increase on July 11th. Um, so yeah, whatever the listed price is, is the discounted price right now. If you're a champion, you get 20% off the current listed price, which is already a sales price. George likes Reload. Or instead of Redux. Does anyone like Redux or do, or do you just like a different words? Um, it would have to be a much better word for us to replace the word that we've already kind of said, but it, it still is pretty easy for us to change it at this point because we haven't gone to print. Let's see if there's any other topics that I meant to cover. So games that I played recently, I played uh, Hegemony. I think I played that right before last week's livecast. I also played Terracotta Army and played Applejack on Board Game Arena. Had a good time with all of them. I have filmed videos about all those games now. Uh, I continue to go climbing, indoor rock climbing, and play disc golf. Two other games of sorts that I'm playing. And, um, oh yeah, I do have some other news from the, from the e-newsletter before I finish things off. With questions let's see if there's anything else things i'm working on lately working a lot on game design um in addition to all my normal daily responsibilities doing some proofreading for a game a product that we're working on and doing some play testing 
I know that's all very vague, but it's always fun to work on those things. Uh, yeah, let's look back over here. So, um, some convention news. Dice Tower East is happening, actually starting now, July 5th through 9th. We are not there, but uh, we contribute, I think we contribute to their play and win, and Meeple Source is there with a booth, and they have some of our products there. We have a much bigger partnership with Meeple Source at Gen Con, where we share a booth, and uh, with, with Meeple Source, we have a, a Stonewire Games and Meeple Source booth at Gen Con. It's a big space. Well, we have a lot of volunteers there, a lot of help. I won't personally be there, but some members of the Stonewire Games team will be there, and a lot of other people will be there in Stonewire Games t-shirts as volunteers for, uh, for Stonewire Games. Yeah, that was the other news from the e-newsletter over here. Jake says, Rolling Realms Volume 2 is the most clear to him, but it loses the alliteration. That's true, but if it's... Clarity is good, too. Although we didn't call the first one Volume 1. That kind of throws things off a little bit, too. Okay, Joshua, thank you for reposting here. He says, how much time do you leave a game design in your mind and or how much do you put to paper before making your first prototype to begin testing? It really depends on the game. I mean, sometimes I get to the prototype right away if it's a fairly simple concept. Sometimes I play around with it for a while, brainstorming for a while on paper for maybe a month. Um, so it can be between a day and a month, depending on the game. He says, I have a number of designs that I haven't made a prototype of, as I'm sure unsure how well they will turn out, and the jump feels like a lot of work. The jump definitely is a lot of work, I and mean, that, that's the work of a game design, right? Not just the fun brainstorming. A lot of fun, but the strange brainstorming, conceptual brainstorming, versus making that first prototype and getting it to the table. Um, and I would say that in almost every case I've ever experienced, when you actually play it, it plays so differently than how you imagined it. So... I don't know, you kind of have to pick and choose the games that you choose to make a prototype of and, and actually get to the table, knowing that they're probably not going to work out the way that you thought, despite the work that you put into them. But even the, that case, like, even when I put a lot of work into a game and it doesn't work out, I still feel like I learned a lot from it that I can apply to other games in the future. Oh, okay, Chad says, return to Rolling Realms. That is perhaps the most literal return to Rolling Realms. Uh, that, that's the intent of how I was using uh, Redux here. Julie also mentions Quirkle Cubes. Dan says, any update on the Tapestry digital app? I have not heard an update in quite some time from the Tapestry digital developers, but I have told them that, or I've asked them to update, when they have updates, that they should post them in the Tapestry digital group, in the Tapestry group, and on Board Game Geek. So whenever there is an update, you'll see it from them at the same time that I do. Ben says, am I interested in Disney Lorcana, which comes out fairly soon? I am very interested in it, absolutely. At least curiosity from you know a game design perspective. It does seem pretty similar to Magic the Gathering, but with a few twists. And so yeah, I'm curious to try it, to, to play it. I don't think it's a game that I'll, I'll fully collect unless I really fall for it. But uh, I'm definitely curious about it. And adjacent to that is that I'm really excited to host a draft for the Lord of the Rings set for Magic the Gathering this weekend. I've been waiting to play it for quite some time, and I've heard great things about it. And yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna play that this weekend. Okay, so some people like Redux. I'm glad some people like it. Um, we don't have to stick with it. I, I might do a poll among our, our shareholders or something like that to see if uh, if there's a strong if people strongly prefer one of these other words. But uh, I'm glad some people like it. Let's see. Chad says, do you have any toys or figurines in sleeves in my living space? Other than my games, I don't think I do. I don't think I have any like true collector's items of really anything. Um, I do have the, you know, I, I made a lightsaber when I was at, at uh, Galaxy's Edge recently. I have that. That's like the, the most collectible type thing that I have on my shelf right now. And that was something I got fairly recently. Other people are saying they do like Redux. So I'm, 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 glad, yeah, I, I'm glad I asked that. I, I wasn't trying to fish for compliments or see if that is the right word, but I can never tell when people are suggesting something else if they, if everybody wants something else or if maybe some people do like um, the initial name that we chose. But it is fun. It is fun in some ways to have this product that we've announced that uh, that isn't set in stone yet. So there are things about it that are flexible if we need to change them. Carol says, will you tell us if the Frisbee-looking image on the champion shirts refer to Stillmeyer discs? 
I actually don't know offhand. Let me let me take a quick look at it. So we have a, a we have announced if you're a Sumire champion in our newsletter that I sent yesterday, we revealed the new shirt um, for Stomire champions. Uh, we're gauging interest for it so we can know how many to order. Let's see what the shirt looks like. Uh, I believe that is, yeah, I believe those are discs. Yeah, we were trying to fill up all the slots. So yeah, there's a lot of lot of teasers on this one. Um, but uh, yes, I, I believe that is referring to the disc, disc off di guess, discs, Carol. Sam says, more of a listener in today's stream. Totally fine, I don't, have any, I don't think I have any visuals to hold up today. Uh, Sam says, it's cool how the realm for expeditions will eventually be an Easter egg for mechanisms that didn't make the final cut. Something I hope to not do for most of our games, but that is the case. That is the story behind the Expeditions Realm. He says, I had a friend write a short story based around a location that is no longer in Everstone, the game that, that Sam is working on, Everstone. So we're going to hide it, hide the location in the board art, hopefully. That's really cool. I love little Easter eggs like that, especially if there's a story behind it. People in the know feel special. People who don't in the, aren't in the know might be a little curious about it, might look into it. Okay, Nathan says, my worry would be for a casual customer. They might see both Rolling Realms boxes on the shelf and see Redux and assume the original box is somehow no longer a meaningful addition or somehow out of date. Yeah, is there, yeah that's a fair concern, Nathan. Is there any, any of these words that challenge that? Um, so we have Return to Rolling Realms, Rolling Realms Volume 2, Rolling Realms Reload or Reloaded, Rolling Realms Redux, Rolling Realms Remastered, and Rolling Realms Reroll. Do any of those clearly convey that? Well, also, I mean, we can also just put on the box of Rolling Realms Redux, uh, 12 new realms. I think, I think we might, I think we might have that on the box. Yeah, we do have that on the box. Yeah, so the box says, standalone game, 12 new realms, um, right there under the word Redux. That's pretty clear, I think. Uh, Carrie just got a bunch of board game recommendations. Ian has a dry erase clarification. Just uh, He says his brain was thinking realms in general. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ian. Sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, Ian was has, it looks like the dry erase spray is not working great on those two realms. Yeah, so I think it is something about the coding on those realms. And I'm hoping Panda figures it out soon. We can't go to print with Rolling Realms Redux until we figure out that coding. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm just looking for other questions here before we sign off for the day. I think I've covered all the subjects in the e-newsletter today. Elaine says, would you call the shirt yellow or orange? I'd call it kind of a golden yellow, I think, the champion shirt. Ted says, the reason for the color yellow for the T, other colors possible. Uh, the reason is shown on the shirt, Ted. I'm not going to spoil it here. It'll be something for champions to look at. Uh, that is the color we're going with. So if you don't like the color, that's totally fine. We'll make new shirts next year, but we're trying to have a variety of shirts. We already have champion shirts in blue and what are the other colors we have? In gray, I think. And we have a green. So yeah, we're trying to hit all the colors in it. People don't like the yellow. We'll, we'll make another shirt next year. Trishul says, re-rolling realms, rolling realms revolution. Uh, but I like Redux too. Re Revolution could work. I, I don't know if it, yeah, a lot of rewords. Revolution. Good options for debate here. Joe says if you order the plastic Mex Expeditions version, uh, that is still in stock and what is currently shipping out. Yes, Joe. So the uh, in most regions, the only version of Rolling Realms that is currently in stock is the standard version. Uh, while we wait for Wave Two of the ironclad version to arrive in like late august you can still pre-order that one but it won't ship until a little bit later carol says and red shirt there's a red champion shirt too that oh yeah i love the red shirt art by miles bensky yeah that's a great one so yeah we're trying to hit all the different colors i totally get if golden yellow isn't your thing it, it, it is definitely an odd color but there's a reason for it shown on the shirt and uh and we'll, we'll do other colors in, in future years Maxwell says, it would be cool if you released a Rolling Realms Redux with all cards released so far in the box. Yeah, we're not going to do that. I, 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 we're, we're not going to do that. Um, we'll, we will continue to sell Rolling Realms with those 11 realms. We'll have Rolling Realms Redux with 12 new realms. And then in between, 
will have all the promos that you can still get and get those promos whenever you want. You can pick and choose the promos you want, but we're not, we don't do all in products like that. We, we like to let people pick and choose. The price would be extravagantly high if we offered that. Um, and so we, we'd much rather people be able to pick and choose the realms that they want. And we're still, by doing Redux, we are offering you a significant discount on each realm. Um, it would normally cost around $60 to get 12 new realms. This will be a lot less than that. <laughs> uh, some people are saying they like the yellow. So I'm glad some people like it. Chad says the progress chart on our website. So if you go to the news page on our website, you can see the pro progress chart. He says, are you having a hard time spinning all those plates? Um, no, project management is going pretty well. I have, I have a pretty good system for project management of all these different games that are at different stages. It helps that they are at different stages right now. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty much it for today. We've talked about all the topics. You all have given me lots to think about today. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining the conversation. I will, uh, I'll sign off for now. I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday and a wonderful week. And if you have any follow-up questions, the best place for me to see them is on the YouTube version of this video. That should be live in about 15 to 20 minutes. So yeah, have a great day and I'll see you next week. Take care, bye.